It's all come down to this. We started this journey 12 weeks ago in preseason camp with both teams, and now the day of reckoning is near. It's Florida Blue, Florida Classic Week, and wow, that's the excitement built for the November 18th, 43rd year of the big game. We always say records don't matter with the Florida Classic, and this weekend showed just that. Raymond Woody Jr. and his BCU Wildcats pulled off a big 31-14 upset of Alabama A&M, and they're on a two-game winning streak and playing their best ball of the season. The Rattlers coasted to a 28-0 win over the Lincoln, California Oaklanders, and here we are. Just days away from one of the biggest classics in all of HBCU football. This is our final show leading up to the Florida Blue Florida Classic, and we couldn't be more excited. We have enjoyed bringing you all of the ins and the outs of the series, and we'd like to thank the hundreds of positive comments and repostings on social media about the series. This show has had all the angles of the great SWAC showdown in O-Town. Our own Vaughn Wilson will take it from here. Vaughn? If anyone knows anything about the Florida Classic, it's that records matter very little. In 2010, Brian Jenkins marched an undefeated BCU Wildcats team into the Florida Classic against a struggling Joe Taylor Rattler team. In the end, it would be the only blemish on the Wildcats regular season record and the last time Jenkins lost a Florida Classic. The Wildcats would go on to become HBCU national champions that year. In 2018, FAMU was in prime position to win the conference and make their way to the Celebration Bowl as a MEAG member. The Wildcats limped into the Classic under Terry Sims being ranked the underdog by all accounts. BCU will pull out the win and deny FAMU their first ever Celebration Bowl berth. Of course, you can't have a Florida Classic without the bands. The BCU Marching Wildcats and the FAMU Marching 100, two of the most accomplished bands in the entire country face off in a weekend of head-to-head -head competition. Starting off is Friday's Battle of the Bands at the Amway Center. Then on Saturday at halftime, it's no time to run to the concession stands as all eyes will be on the March 100 and the Pride. The Florida Blue Florida Classic returns on Saturday, November 18th. Get ready for the greatest rivalry in HBCU sports as the Rattlers and Wildcats meet in Orlando. Experience the Florida Blue Florida Classic. Get your tickets now at floridaclassic.org. Camping World Stadium provides one of the largest tailgating experiences in all of college football. From the RV city to the virtual small city of vendors, what happens outside of the stadium leading up to the game is unmatched. Let's take a throwback look at a trek through the Florida Classic tailgating fun. We're going to battle today. The Rattlers, baby. Bam, you all the way. And they come so bad, it's hot out here. And they still gonna do their thing. They can be cold, raining. We gonna do our thing. Bottom line. Love me some Rattlers. Don't wanna get bit by one, but I love me some Rattlers. <laughs> Sir? Uh, Cthulhu Cookman University. What brings you out to the classic today? I'm here every year ever since I graduated. I'm here every year. Who's, who's going to win the game today? Cthulhu Cookman. That's obvious. Two plus two equal four every day. Hey. Now you got on fam gear and she got on Cthulhu gear. Yeah. Which one of y'all sell the most? Me. No, me. I sell the most. She wish. <laughs> Hey, 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 no, y'all need to go on the phone. Hold on, hold on. He's looking for Bethune Cookman and Rattler that have known each other for a long time. See, that's what you be my neighbor. This is my neighbor and this is my roommate. That's up. Yeah, we've been around a long time. I knew you before you knew him. Yes, sir. Yeah. My bad. So this is definitely new year. This is new year. Yeah, so I'm talking about. So do you guys get together for Thanksgiving by any chance? I'm not going to head out for Thanksgiving no more. We had crystals at his house. That didn't work. That was just only for the rattlers. <laughs> we had steak for the wildcats. <laughs> One thing that makes the Florida Blue Florida Classic special is the intertwining of the schools and families. 
Nearly all rattlers and all wildcats have someone in their family from the other side. Additionally, both schools have a great history of great individuals graduating from one school and excelling at the other in their professional lives. Meet Royce Reed, a FAMU graduate and current BCU Bad Cats cheer coach, and Dr. Allison Watson, who is a BCU graduate and is the current provost at Florida A&M. Um, I went to FAM, my freshman year was 98, and I graduated, you know, well, one, I did not have a choice. Um, my entire family, my extended family, everybody went to FAMU. Um, the only person that did not go to FAMU was my first cousin. And that's because her dad, my uncle, was the band director here. So she followed in his footsteps. And now I'm following in his footsteps. But my Uncle Barry was also a rattler. So it's kind of full circle. My name is Allison Leggett Watson. I am from Washington, D.C., born and raised, but a Floridian at heart because my entire family is from the state of Florida. And I graduated from the illustrious Bethune-Cookman College, which is now Bethune-Cookman University, and I currently serve as the Provost and Vice President for Academic Affairs at Florida A&M University, also illustrious number one public HBCU in the nation. You know, I have to say this, Dr. President Bronson was my inspiration for leadership. I used to see him walk on the campus of Bethune-Cookman and I said, that is the type of leader that I want to be. He was so inspirational, but knowledgeable, um, smart with it, knew how to navigate, and when I had the opportunity to engage with him, I was like, he's my example, example aside from Mary McLeod Bethune. So it was President Bronson that inspired me to want to become a president. I wrote it in my senior paper, and I used Mary McLeod Bethune as my guide. Had no idea that almost 30 years later, I would be at Florida A&M University in this role. It blew me away. Um, it's still, I pinch myself, um, but you know, God's plan. I've always been busy. My parents always kept me busy. So when I went to FAM, I was a cheerleader. I was in Mahogany Dance Theater. I was in the Essential Theater. Um, I was just always involved in stuff. I tried to stay busy. You know, I have anxiety really bad. So if I'm not busy, I just, I get bored. <laughs> Oh my goodness, I got to tell this story because people don't know. Our grand uncle, so, so my father, um, my whole family is from Key West, Florida. Our uncle was the first in our family to go to college. He came to FAMU. He became a, a wonderful doctor and he said, I will invest in my brother's children. And so um, the story as it was told to me by my big cousin is that he chose for my aunt to go to college. He, she could have come to FAMU, but Key West was farther away from Tallahassee than Daytona Beach. And so she started her journey at Daytona Beach at Bethune-Cookman, and the rest is history. There are, oh, almost, uh, probably hundreds of Bethune-Cookman graduates in my family. Um, and a few rattlers sprinkled here and there. Uh, but we have such a rich history that I could go on and on. And I was raised on the campus of Bethune-Cookman. I spent summers in Daytona Beach. I spent pre-college experiences in Daytona Beach, in Cottle Hall, in the science labs. But my big cousin, Lynn Thompson, has a prolific legacy. Um, in athletics, being the longest serving MEAC athletic director, vice president for athletics. Uh, and it was because of him and his leadership that I had my entryway into the Florida Classic. Yeah, so I graduated from FAMU in 2003 and I tried out for the Magic and I made it. I made it like my first year trying out. So um, I did Magic. 0304, and then I skipped a year, and then I did 0506, 
And then I decided I wanted to go to Miami and try out for the Heat and made it. So I did the Heat 0607. Um, yeah, when they walk in the stadium, it's kind of like their Super Bowl. This is the finale of the season. Um, and it's the game that they look forward to the most. Um, we start by doing, you know, some interviews and then we do the luncheon and both teams perform. And, you know, it's like almost like a show off. And they look forward to that. And then the game, you know, the game is like, it's our game too. And I don't think people really understand that because Cheer just now is starting to get the recognition that we knew it should have. But now that people are paying attention to it because of the success of, you know, some of the TV shows and dance shows, it's like, oh wow, they're actually having their own competition. And even though we might not be right in front of each other, everybody's looking across the field to see who's gonna do what. Um, and then we compete against each other at nationals. And, you know, last year wasn't BCU's best, um, but it was also the first year back. And for them to even be there was, it said a lot because it, it showed you that we're here. And I always tell people, you know, like Prime said, you better get us now because this is the worst we're gonna be. We're just gonna keep getting better. You got me. Like, I'm a rattler and we know what we do. And now I'm a wildcat too. So come on, think about it. you got a cat and you got a snake. Come on. We're about to fight fire with gasoline. Now there's historical significance for our founders for both institutions. Um, the heart of our founders is still permeating through both campuses. And that heart carries through the people that love the institutions. And when we all come together, uh, it's passionate, it's, it's explosive. Because we're like, we're gonna see you on the field. We're gonna see you in the gridiron. But we also know that we're putting out the highest, most prestigious academicians, lawyers, teachers, business owners that the country can find. And so um, the game is significant because it's coming together, it's camaraderie and it's rivalry. Uh, I was at the game, the homecoming game at FAMU. My husband refuses to take his Bethune-Cookman tag off his car and people were knocking on our car as we're driving in the parking lot saying, go back to Daytona. But it's all in love. And then we rolled down the window and showed, a, showed them our FAMU shirt for the FAMU home. They were like, all right, you're all right. Uh, it is so significant to bring together um, people that love institutions just as much as we do, but that for the common good, we're raising money for scholarships. We're changing lives through the trajectory of our partnerships with businesses and philanthropists. We're bringing Florida Blue, one of the nation's most leading um, health industries, right here to the heart of the state of Florida, um, close to Daytona and a little bit farther from Tallahassee, but we all come together and whether it's orange and green or maroon and gold, we're like, hey, let's do this. And it's life changing for our state. People from all over that may not have thought about college for years when they see that Florida blue plastic in Orlando, they're like, I could go to college. Um, we're, we're so significant because there are four HBCUs in the state of Florida um, and you get to see the, the number one public HBCU, a state institution, um, play and work with and join together with an esteemed private institution for the cause to do what our ancestors set out to do. And that is make our lives better. The Florida Blue Florida Classic returns on Saturday, November 18th. Get ready for the greatest rivalry in HBCU sports as the Rattlers and Wildcats meet in Orlando. Experience the Florida Blue Florida Classic. Get your tickets now at floridaclassic.org. It is Florida Classic weekend, finally. We've been waiting all year uh, for this game. Uh, it couldn't be any more exciting leading into the Florida Classic. Uh, the Rattlers secured the east of the SWAC and had a great senior day against Lincoln University, 28 to nothing. But the biggest surprise and upset, I should say, was that Coach Raymond Woody and the Bethune-Cookman Wildcats took it to Alabama A&M on senior day. 
They were down 14, nothing came back 31, 14. And so as we always say, records don't matter in the Florida classic. And this year is a prime example. We want to welcome in head coach Raymond Woody of the Bethune Cookman university Wildcats and head coach Willie Simmons of the Florida and then Rattlers coach, coach, mm -hmm. coach Woody first. How you doing today, coach? I'm doing great. And yourself? Hey, I'm doing great. I got I got uh, the two Florida Blue Florida Classic coaches on. Coach Simmons, I, I, have you recovered from Senior Day? It was pretty wild last night. <laughs> yeah, I thought the uh, 24 hour rule still applies, so uh, got a chance to enjoy a, a great send off for our seniors, and uh, we're, we're back at it. <clears throat> okay, and I'm gonna start with you, Coach Woody. Um, I started with you in camp on your first scrimmage in camp, and uh, I said something to you that day. I said, Coach. Uh, somebody didn't tell your players it's supposed to be a rebuilding year because I just saw a fire. Um, I didn't know what you had televised and you didn't either because you hadn't ha assembled them for that long. Just talk about the ability of your team to progress during the season to finally putting together a real complete game on Saturday. Yeah, you know, I'm really proud of the guys. You know, obviously, you know, when you come in, you know, as a new guy, you know, whatever happened in the past happened in the past. We just pushing forward to what we're trying to do with this program now and uh you know the players have been progressing you know obviously putting a full game and it wasn't perfect but just getting these guys to understand how to finish and, and that's what we've been talking about throughout you know the uh the spring the summer the fall you know putting the right pieces together and finishing games and that's something that we've been stressing to our guys you know whether it was Injuries here, injuries there. There's no excuses. Blame the one. I mean, every week, every day, we prepare to finish everything that we start. And talking about the season, when you look at Bethune-Cookman's record, there were so many games that were one or two score games. So even with you not having what you feel is good compliment and playing with a team that was not fully yours, the BCU Wildcats had a respectable season so far. And for Coach Simmons, you know, a veteran team coming in and uh, just coming off finishing a senior day. Coach, just talk about that because you had a lot of seniors being honored uh, on yesterday. And um, now you turn your attention to the Florida Classic. Yeah, uh, obviously we were very strategic in how we uh, scheduled this year, knowing that we had a bye week before the Florida Classic and uh, not wanting to have another bye week uh, to get a full slate of 11 games. Uh, we wanted to find a, a smaller opponent. And uh, Lincoln University uh, was a Division II program. Uh, they came in winless. We didn't know that at the time when we scheduled them, obviously, but uh, came in winless. And, and we made the decision to rest a lot of guys to try to get them back you know, fully healthy and ready for this week's game. And uh, I thought it worked out really well. I uh, got to get some guys like Junior Muratovic, uh some quality reps, and he hadn't played a whole lot this season. So just trying to build depth for this year and in the future, uh, I thought was, uh, you know, was our plan going into it. And I thought we executed that plan uh, pretty well. And I uh, hope to get everyone back this week because we all know how important this game is in the grand scheme of things. You know, for the first time, it doesn't really have any bearing on anyone's postseason implications. Um, but indeed, it's still the biggest rivalry, uh, I think, in black college sports, one of the biggest in all of college athletics. And so we're excited about the opportunity. I'm looking forward to a, a great uh, week of events leading up to the to the game. And um, this is Coach Wood's first um, time as a head football coach. I remember my first time in 2018. And uh, it's, it's everything that people build it up to be and more. Well, I am not going to keep these guys long. I know, I know they have to prepare uh, for the game on Saturday, but I, I want to put a plug in, a shameless plug. On Friday at the Florida Classic Consortium kickoff, I'll be co-hosting the event. So I get to sit down with these coaches again at their last full presser. Uh, before the game. So, coaches, thank you all for joining us today. I know Coach Woody uh, pulled in from practice, um, and I know Coach Simmons is heading that way. So I thank you all very much uh, for giving us a few minutes of your time. We are looking forward to and are excited. Uh, Wildcat fans, Rattler fans are excited to head to Orlando Camping World Stadium. Don't forget Friday night, the Battle of the Bands at the Amway Center, and then Saturday, the Fan Fest out on Tinker Field, and of course, the best the best vendor zone I've ever seen in my life out of uh, surrounding Camping World Stadium. And then 3.30 p.m., the Wildcats and the Rattlers square off, of course, the Marching 100 and the Marching Wildcats. It just doesn't get any better than that. Or does it? 
Meet Dr. Otis Kirksey. He is one of the examples of a family divided. Probably no one has more intertwined family than that of Dr. Kirksey's. A Daytona Beach native who lived on the edge of BCU campus his whole life. His whole family went to BCU except him. He is such a BCU legacy that his family was friends with Dr. Bethune. Uh, Otis Kirksey, um, currently I serve as Director of Pharmacy Services here uh, at Neighborhood Medical Center. I'm originally from um, Daytona Beach, Florida. Born and raised right around the corner from Bethune Cookman. <laughs> that used to be my playground. It's very interesting because my, my father uh, grew up as a playmate with Miss Bethune's grandson, Albert Jr. And so they were very close friends. You know, Mr. Ms. Bethune would be over at the house, right? So uh, my mother started cooking at 17 and played basketball for two years. And she was a starting point guard and actually played against Althea Gibson and so forth back in the day. Uh, my older brother, who was albino and legally blind, was got a scholarship to play football. That was the first in history, you know. And, you know, he, he, he fell for one season. And uh, my younger brother uh, started his freshman year as tight end, right? So I'm in the middle. And I broke the cycle to the madness. You know, I, I came to FAMU. So, you know, it was, uh, you know, always nice when we were kicking their butt every year going back home because I, I could talk noise. But, uh, you know, I remember the times when I used to go to, to the game and pull for Cookman. That's before I became a rattler, right? So, so now, you know, um, I think, you know, my dad passed in December and, you know, it was a, a running um, a joke because with the, all those years they beat us, right? Every year, immediately after the game, he'd be burning my phone up and I wouldn't answer his phone, right? But his best friend, Creamy Hayes, who would always come by our tailgate, him and his daughter and his wife, you know, after the game, to rub it in. I'd be mad, I'm packing up and everything, and they asked me, man, why you leaving so early, right? So, and we go back and forth, man, and so, you know, now, you know, those guys are gone. Now, you know, I've, you know, moved my, my robbery to uh, one of my uh, good friends, Reverend Kevin James, who is the past chaplain at Cookman and is a uh, uh, United Methodist preacher down in, uh, in Palm Coast. So his brother, uh, uh, Hankerson, who's an AD at Rickards, he went to FAMU. So, you know, you know, plus uh, Reverend James' wife went to FAMU. So, you know, we keep it going back and forth, you know. So we, we, we'll be hooking up in, um, in Orlando and, and see who's gonna catch. Well, we know we're gonna, we're gonna win. So they're not looking forward to it at all. <laughs> all right, we're in the home stretch. So let's run down the complete week of official activities for the Florida Blue Florida Classic. On November 15th, it's the HBCU Conversation Series presented by Wells Fargo. On November 16th, it's a Night of Distinction presented by Vice Star Credit Union. On November 17th, the Diversity Job Fair at the Amway Center. Also on November 17th, the Florida Classic Consortium Kickoff Luncheon presented by Florida Blue and Wells Fargo. Also later on is the Florida Blue Battle of the Bands presented by Florida Blue and Publix. November 18th is the Florida Classic Fan Fest at Tinker Field. November 18th also is the Florida Blue Florida Classic game at 3.30 p.m. We'll see you Saturday at Camping World Stadium. The Florida Blue Florida Classic returns on Saturday, November 18th. Get ready to experience the greatest rivalry in HBCU sports as the Florida A&M Rattlers and the Bethune-Cookman Wildcats meet in Orlando. Don't miss out on the best bands in the land as the FAMU Marching 100 and the BCU Marching Wildcats show up and show out. Every play, every beat. Experience the Florida Blue Florida Classic. Get your tickets now at floridaclassic.org. Mm -hmm.